Então, para quem não sabe, né, a OpenAI tinha divulgado no Twitter hoje que ela ia divulgar algo para desenvolvedores. Aí ela entrou aqui, ó, Agent Tools for Developers, querendo competir com Cloud, né, o Cloud Engine que a gente está usando aqui para fazer o nosso, nosso jogo. Né? Então, vamos ver o que, que eles têm a nos dizer na live. Vamos lá. Aí. OpenAI. Hoje estamos aqui para falar com developers e tá. agentes. E, em particular, estamos excited para lançar um monte de novas tools que fazem fácil para os developers construir reliáveis e usáveis agentes. Massa. Now, when we say agent, we mean a system that can act independently to do tasks on your behalf. Então, é massa aqui que ele está descrevendo a gente como um assistente que pode fazer tarefas por ti. Só que ele está colocando de uma forma não agentes para nós desenvolvedores, mas agente e desenvolvedor poder criar novos agentes. Então, provavelmente ele está falando do que todo mundo está dizendo agora, que é o MCP, será que é? Eu quero falar sobre o Model Context Pro Protocol com vocês. So let's dive into all the stuff that we're launching today. Like Kevin mentioned, we have three new built-in tools. We have a new API and an open source SDK. Mm. Uh, starting off with the built-in tools, the first tool that we're announcing today is called the web search tool. Okay. The web search tool allows our models to access information from the internet so that your responses and the, the output that you get is up to date and factual. Uh, the web search tool is the same tool that powers ChatGPT search, and it's powered by a fine-tuned model under the hood. So this is a fine-tuned GPT-40 or 40 mini that is really good at looking at large amounts of data retrieved from the web, finding the relevant pieces of information, and then clearly citing it in its response. Um, in a benchmark that uh, measures uh, these type of things, uh, which is called simple QA, mm -hmm. uh, you can see that GPT-40 hits a high score of uh, state-of-the-art score of 90%. So that's the first tool. Steve, do you want to tell us about the second one? Yeah, the second tool is actually my mm -hmm. favorite tool, and this is the file search tool. Now, we launched the file search tool last year uh, in the Assistance API as a way for developers to upload, chunk, embed their documents, and then do really easily, do uh, rag really easily over those documents. Tá. Rag, que todo mundo diz que, ó, oh, rag vai acabar, tu não precisa mais fazer rag, mas... Now, we're really excited to be launching two new features in the file search tool today. The first mm -hmm. is metadata filtering. So okay. with metadata filtering, you can add attributes to your files to be able to easily filter them down to just the ones that are the most relevant for your query. The second is a direct search endpoint. So now you can directly search your vector stores without your queries being filtered through the model first. Nice. So you have web search for the public data, file search for the, the private data that you have. And then the third tool that we are launching is the computer use tool. The computer use tool is operator in the API, but it allows you to control the computers that you are operating. So this could be a virtual machine. It could be a legacy application that just has a graphical user interface and you have no API access to it. If you want to automate those kind of tasks and, and build applications on that, you can use the computer use tool, which comes with the computer use model. Um, so this is the no. same model that is used by operator in ChatGPT. It has Sora benchmarks on Uh, OS World, Web Arena, Web Voyager. Eu fico me perguntando se a galera de QA tá ligado nessas coisas, tá ligado? Tipo, tu que trabalha com QA, meu, cara, eu estaria eu estaria em cima assim para criar ferramenta de para testar, por exemplo, tipo assim, fazer um teste de regressão, tá ligado? De qualidade, fazer um teste de regressão usando IA. Since then, we've, we've uh, introduced multi-modalities. So you have images, you have audio. We are introducing tools today. Mm -hmm. And you also have products like O1 Pro, Deep Research, Operator, that make these multiple model turns and multiple tool calls behind the scenes. Tá. So we wanted to build an API primitive that is flexible enough. It, it supports multiple turns. It supports tools. Um, and we're calling this new API the Responses API. Será que eles vão mudar? Eles vão mudar o nome. Eles vão usar MCP. And to show you the Responses API, I'm going to hand it over to Steve. Cool. Let's go. O MCP eu acho que foi criado pela Anthropic, né? Go ahead and take a look at the Responses API. So, if you've used chat completions before, this will look really familiar to you. Manda. You select some context, you ah. pick a model, and you get a response. It's pretty simple. Yep. It's pretty simple. <laughs> uh, and it's always hilarious. So, <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> um, so, to demonstrate the power of the Responses API, we're going to be building sort of a personal stylist assistant. So, let's start off by giving it some instructions. You are a personal... You're only typing in front of like 50,000 people right now. Então Don't worry about it. Stream. Cool. And we'll say, uh, we'll get rid of this, and we'll say, okay. what are some of the latest trends? The joke's in the context. The joke is in the context. Let's see what it says. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Great. Um, but no personal stylist assistant is complete unless it understands no, what its users like. Sim. So in order to demonstrate this, we've created a vector store that has uh, some you know, like some entries, almost some diary entries of what people on the team have been wearing. Um, we've oh, kind of been, that's not weird at all. It's not weird at all. I would just let it happen. Uh, <laughs> we've kind of been following people around the office and kind of like understanding what they've, what they've been up to. So we, we? We, uh, we, yeah, there's a whole, there's a team, there's a team on it. Yeah. <laughs> Ao que dá juntar quatro engenheiros de API no, no, na call. So I'll go ahead and add the file search tool. 
and uh, I'll copy in my vector store ID. And here I can actually filter down this, the files in this vector store to just the ones that are relevant to the person that we want to oh. style. So uh, in this case, let's start with Ilan. We'll go ahead and filter down to his username. <laughs> <You>. yeah. <laughs> and we'll come back here and we'll refresh. And we'll say, uh, can you briefly mm. summarize what mm. Ilan likes to wear? I often ask ChatGPT this question. Yeah, but it never knows. And now it can actually tell you what Elon looks like. <laughs> cool. So Elon has a distinct and consistent style characterized by a Miami Sheik. That's really awesome. Yeah. Um, so the file source tool is a great way to bring information about your users into your application. But Vocês estão ligado que o que eles estão fazendo aqui basicamente é uma query, né? Tipo, os filtros nada mais é do que uma query. Tipo assim, cara, começa a quebrar tudo que a gente tem hoje de conceitos, tá ligado? De tu fazer um REST, de tu, tipo, ter, indexa ter indexação na tua tabela lá pra fazer tais buscas. Esquece tudo isso, cara. Elasticsearch. A gente usa um, elast um Elasticsearch aqui. No momento que a gente começar a migrar e aplicar essas coisas aqui de IA, meu, muita regra de negócio também vai vir na instrução. Então, aqui no Instructions... Tu vai colocar regras de negócio. Nos filtros de metadados, basicamente tu tá fazendo coisas que tu configurava no teu Elasticsearch, tá ligado? GraphQL bombando. É um GraphQL bombado, é. Tipo, muita coisa vai mudar, meu. Com MCP agora, pra quem tá perguntando o que, que, é, o que, que é o MCP, uh, é um protocolo, cara. Model Context Protocol, criado pela Anthropic. Eu quero, eu vou gravar um vídeo só sobre MCP aqui para vocês, tá? Mas basicamente uh, o MCP ele te possibilita uh, juntar múltiplas informações, múltiplas inf de, informações de múltiplos lugares para te guspir para IA, tá ligado? Nenhum desses desenhos é bom o suficiente, né? Uh, nenhum desses é bom, cara. Então basicamente tipo assim, ó, o que, que é o MCP? Tu tem, tu tem aqui um modelo, tá? Vai ter o cloud da Anthropic. Tem o cloud da Anthropic. Aí tu quer que o cloud da Anthropic ele acesse uma API, certo? Aí o que, que tu tinha que fazer? Tu, queria, tu tinha que criar né, no teu sistema o acesso à API específica. Tipo assim, sei lá, do weather. Basicamente isso que tu fazia. O MCP, e aí se tu tivesse uma outra API, por exemplo, para conectar, Tu ia conectar ela à tua API de, de documentos. De documents. Tá? Aí aqui tu ia ter a tua API, tu ia fazer o RAG da vida, faz o que tu quiser com isso aqui. Tá? Como que tu vai conectar? O MCP seria um BFF pro teu modelo. Um back-end for front-end. Mas basicamente ele possibilita tu conectar tudo no MCP. Tu coloca todos os teus serviços ali. Tu cria as instruções e aí o modelo ele vai basicamente fazer um prompt pro teu MCP e aí o modelo vai escolher dentro do MCP qual API ele quer usar. É um BFF da vida, meu. Acho que lá no Twitter deve ter um... Eu vi esses dias o cara postou uma imagem bem legal do MCP. Ó, então basicamente tu tem aqui, por exemplo, o cursor, a tua ideia, tá? Tu tem o um cursor, o windsurf ou qualquer coisa aqui, tá? Uh... Tu tinha uma API única do GitHub, uma API única do Slack e do Local File System. Então, tu poderia criar lá o teu agente, lá dentro da tua IDE, ou fazer o que tu quiser dentro do cloud ali. Uh, então, o próprio, por exemplo, code agent daqui da, da Anthropic, tu pode agora conectar um MCP, ou se tu tiver, por exemplo, o aplicativo, se tu tiver o aplicativo do, da cloud ou o GPT instalado no teu computador, tu também poderia fazer isso. Então, o MCP, basicamente, é tu cria uma API unificada, para conversar com, com a tua aplicação. Pode ser a aplicação da, da OpenAI, pode ser do, do, do Cloud, pode ser o Cursor, Windsurf. E no teu Model Context Protocol, tu programa os prompts para cada API, e aí o modelo ele vai conseguir escolher a API que tu tá falando. Então, quando tu perguntar coisas como, tipo assim, ó, uh, quem é que modificou essa linha de código? Ah, ela vai ver, ele, ele vai buscar no GitHub, tá ligado? Ah, uh, quais são as dúvidas que surgiram referente a esse projeto? Ah, ele vai buscar, sei lá, no Slack. 
Ou a gente vai buscar uma do documentação no, no local file system. Então, tu cria esse model context protocol. Eu vou implementar aqui com vocês num vídeo. Eu já tenho um hello world aqui para fazer com vocês. Mas eu achei que a, a OpenAI ia divulgar algo parecido com isso, tá ligado? Mas a, a princípio eles querem fazer tudo na nuvem deles. But in order to be able to create a really good application for this personal stylist, we want to be able to bring in fresh data from around the web um, so that we have both the newest information and also stuff that's really relevant to your users. So in order to demonstrate that, I'll add the web search tool. Well, the web search tool is really great because you can also add you can also add data about like where your user is. So let's try with somebody else. Kevin, are you happy to be taking any trips anytime soon? Let's say Tokyo. Okay, cool. Tokyo. So I'll put in Tokyo here. And we'll swap uh, in Kevin. Tools, me and the response to the API is really cool because it can do multiple things at once. It can call a file search tool, it can call the web search tool, and it can give you a final answer just in one API response. So in order to tell tá it exactly what we want, let's give it some instructions. Tipo, eles estão eles estão chamando de tools, mas para mim parece um pouco a definição do teu MCP. And it'd be good if I knew how to code well. <laughs> Great. You so, say you're an engineer here. Yeah, well, I'm in training. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what, we want the, what we want the model to do is when it's asked to recommend products, we want it to use the file search tool to understand what Kevin likes, and then use the web search tool to find a store near him where he can buy something that he might be interested in. So let's go back and say, uh, find me a jacket um, that I would like nearby. And what the model will do is it will uh, issue a file search tool call to understand what kinds of things Kevin likes to wear. And then it will issue a web search tool call to then go and find uh, stuff that Kevin would like based on where he is. So the model was able to, uh, just in the scope of one API call, find a bunch of Patagonia stores <laughs> in Tokyo. Just for you, Kevin. Which, which go, it's... Tu tá certo, cara. Aqui, ó, vocês falaram aqui que o, o Tools veio antes do MCP. Na real, sim. Na real, os GPTs já tinham actions, né? E tu poderia configurar, era basicamente aquilo. Tu configurava cada action, cada action era uma API, tu definia o teu esquema e a, o GPT decidia qual API chamar a partir do teu esquema e tudo mais para te dar a resposta. O MCP eu acho que é um pouco mais fácil do que aquela, aquela merda de actions lá que a, que a OpenAI tinha. Cara, mas eu vou pular isso aqui, a deada é demais, meu. Go ahead and send that screenshot to the model. It will look at the state of the computer and issue another action. Isso aqui Click, é legal. Drag, tá. move, type, and then we will execute. Peraí, black and black. Deixa eu voltar. So Isso we'll go é ahead legal. and add this. We're using the computer use preview model and the computer. Então ele está usando um modelo que chama. Olha só, o modelo é um modelo novo, ó. Computer use preview. E aí tu passa um computer use preview, o display size e o environment é Linux. Computer use preview tool. Pô, isso aqui é interessante. And we will ask, um, help me find my friend Kevin, a new Patagonia jacket. What's your favorite Bem color? Bem legal, Kevin? hein? Uh, let's go with black. In black. Can't have too many black. Mil reais tu vai gastar por prompt. <laughs> and what the model will do is it will ask us for a screenshot. And we have a Docker container running locally on this computer. And we will go ahead and send that screenshot to the model. It will look at the state of the computer and issue another action. Click, drag, move, type. And then we will execute that action, take another screenshot, send it back to the model. And then it will continue in this fashion until it feels that it's completed the task. And then return a final answer. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Eu vou te apresentar algo chamado browser base, tá ligado? Browser base, a web browser for your AI. Faz basicamente aquilo ali, tá ligado? E tu pode implementar tudo mesmo. Mas, ok. É... Tudo integrado no sistema deles. Aqui é a pegada da, da OpenAI. So, well, this is kind of going and doing its thing. We'll hand it back to Nikunj. Yeah, awesome. So these are some really cool tools and a really flexible API for you to build uh, agents and, and you, have, you have amazing building blocks to, awesome. to do that. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. by default, this is using the responses API, but we actually support multiple vendors. Anything that really fits the chat completions um, shape can work with the agents SDK. Nice. Uh -huh. So um, during the practice runs, we actually, we actually accidentally ordered like many, many Patagonias. So I'm sorry, we're gonna <laughs> have understand. to... We have our two agents, right? We have the stylist agent and we have the customer support re refunds agent. Tá, tu pode criar o teu agente config Python aqui, ó. Cara, isso aqui tá, tá muito parecido, muito parecido com o MCP. So how do we interact with both of them as a user? This is where the notion of handoffs come in. And a handoff is actually a pretty simple idea that's pretty powerful. And it's when you have one conversation where one agent is handling it, and then it hands it off to another, where you keep the entire conversation the same, but behind the scenes, you just swap out the instructions and the tools. Um, and this gives you a way to triage conversations and like load in the correct context for each part of the conversation. So what we've done here is created this triage agent that can hand off to the stylist agent or the customer support agent. So enough talking, let's actually see this in action. So I'm gonna save and do, you know, um, I think we may have ordered one too many Patagonias. <laughs> Can you help me return? I don't them? understand. 
I know, I know, I'm so sorry. I can get you one later. <laughs> so what just happened here is it started off by transferring, remember we're starting with the triage agent, um, to the customer support agent. And this is just a function call that I'll show you in a second. Um, and then the customer support agent proactively mm. called the get past orders function where we can see all of Kevin's Patagonians. I think you'll be okay. <laughs> um, cool. So, to actually see what happened behind the scenes, usually you might need to add some debugging statements by hand. But one of the things... Cara, aquilo ali tá muito parecido com isso aqui, ó. Deixa eu mostrar para vocês o MCP que eu tava codando aqui para mostrar para vocês. Esse aqui é um hello world do MCP, tá ligado? Basicamente, tu importa o MCP server. Uh, e basicamente, tu diz aqui, ó, o teu tool, tu cria uma nova tool. Tu cria a description da tua tool. O teu input schema. E tu dá as referências, tá ligado? Ó, isso aqui, o nome aqui é greeting returns a personalized greeting message. E basicamente tu estabelece o teu esquema e ele vai retornar. E tu tem uma API única do teu MCP. E aí tu conecta isso aqui no teu cursor, no teu code, code agent da cloud, ou o que for, tá ligado? É muito parecido. Só que eles não estão chamando de MCP, óbvio. O que agent SDK traz right out of the box é monitoring e tracing. Então eu vou ir para o over to the tracing UI que nós temos na nossa plataforma um, para realmente ver o que aconteceu. So these are some of the previous runs that we've had. I'm just refreshing the page. Um, and we can see the last one. Uh, and this last one, you can actually see exactly what happened. It started with a triage agent, which um, we sent the request to, made a handoff, and then switched over to the customer support agent, which called the function. Now, no final é tudo binário. Uh, we can see what the original input was. And handoffs are first class objects in this dashboard. So you can see not only which agent we actually handed it off to, but any that it, like, it had as options that it did not, which is actually a really useful feature for debugging. Um, afterward, once we're in the customer support agent, you can see the get, get past orders function call with any input params. Here there were none. Um, and then the output is just, again, just all of Kevin's very monotonous history. Um, <laughs> and then finally, we can get to the end where you get a response. And so these are some of the features that you get right out of the box with the agent's SDK. There's a few more. You, uh, we also have built-in guardrails that you can enable. We have lifecycle events. Um, and importantly, this is an open source framework. So we're going to keep building it out, um, and you can install it like very soon or right now. So you can just do pip install openai middle dash agents, and we'll have an, one for the JavaScript coming soon. Como é que é? Now. So open source framework. So we're going to keep building it out, um, and you can install it like very soon or right now. So you can just do pip install openai middle dash agents. Eu posso? Pip install openai, o que que tu falou? Agents, and, and you can install it like, mm. very soon or right now. So you can just do pip install openai middle dash agents, and we'll have an, one for the JavaScript coming soon. Um, but to close this off, let's um, <laughs> let's let's actually perform the, the refund. So uh, you, know, uh, you know what? I'm sorry, Kevin. Get rid of all of them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to wear? Para quem falou que parecia Pydemix? Yeah. Let's see. By a lot of them. There we go. <laughs> it, takes, it takes a while to return so many categories. Yeah. Yeah. And so what, what happens under the hood? How do, you, how do you debug this? How do you understand more about what's going on? Yeah, yeah. so that... We... Lendo binário. É assim que eu debugo. You can all do back in the, in the, tracing, in the tracing UI. So yeah. this is a pretty nice, straightforward way to build out these experiences. Yeah, yeah. Nikun, Jola. Awesome. Pass it right. back to you. Well, I'm so excited for all of you who have access to all of these tools. Uh, and before we wrap up, I wanted to make two additional points. Manda. First, we've introduced the Responses API, mm -hmm. but the Chat Completions API is not going away. We're going to continue supporting it. Okay, with no responses without any. Okay. Acabou. Vai, open AI. Resumindo, ainda meio. Closed, né? De open não, não tem nada. Mas enfim.